The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Typebond. Now that I have a separate commercial space for my regular shop, I'm finding that I need some tools at home too. And thankfully I have a little bit of space in a garage where I could bring some basic tools and just have the things I need for small house projects. So one of those things is a planer and I need a stand for that planer. So that's what we're gonna do today. It's gonna be a bare bones, basic DIY style build. I don't really have a whole lot in the way of resources here and thankfully we only need a couple of tools. And while I do have some power in here, I don't have a lot and I thought this would be a good test for my new Jackery Explorer 1000. This is a solar powered generator. And I think this might be pretty cool to have on hand for running some of the lights in this space, because of course I'm trying to film this, as well as charging batteries and maybe even running a tool or two off of it. So let's get started on this project. It's gonna be a good one. Yeah, I'm excited about it too. I spent some time noodling around in SketchUp just to visualize the project before making the cut list. Armed with the list of parts, I can start cutting the two by fours because Pine is fine. A lot of sap in here. Mm. I'll cut all the parts for the primary frame first. 21. By the way, if you don't have good work support for longer pieces, you could sometimes find a piece of scrap that'll do the job nicely. Makes for a much more stable cut. Time to fire up the drills. We'll get started by making the two side sub-assemblies. Now this is a great application for pocket screws. You shouldn't use that word. But I don't have my jig here, so I'm just gonna jam some screws in from the outside. To make sure I get the same screw locations in each piece, I'm gonna mark Well, that's my name. the locations on a piece of scrap and transfer those lines to the other pieces. I'm drilling pilot holes from the outside so that the screw travels easily through the first piece and bites into the adjoining piece. Even with a four inch screw, you want to sink it pretty deep, so I'm using a larger bit to counter bore about an inch down. I need to clean off the bench, so I figured why not see if the jackery can run the shop vac, and it can. Nice. Each joint will get some glue, though I'm really pushing the limits of working temps today. It's pretty flippin' cold. It's a bit nipply out. Whenever driving screws, I like to use a clamp to hold the pieces together and prevent them from slipping. Now these screws are definitely overkill, but they're all I had in the four inch plus range, so I'm using them. Now that's one, let's assemble the second one. And there's two. Now to connect these two with the other rails, I'll carefully locate the screw holes. The key is to offset them slightly so that they don't hit the previous screws. I'll start one side at a time, again making use of my clamps to keep things from shifting. And now for the other side. Just like that, we've got a base. Well, as you can tell, it's pretty cold in here. I think I lost feeling in my left toe. Uh, that's all part of the experience, honey. But this hot chocolate is really helping a lot. And this is a good time to take a break and tell you about this Jackery Explorer 1000. We got a lot going on in a very compact form factor here. You got a beautiful digital display. It tells you how much battery you have left, what kind of output or input if you're charging it. We of course have our AC ports here, DC, as well as our USB ports, which is great for all the devices. Just about everything I have charges via USB these days. And of course a cigarette adapter too. And if you need it, think about camping, having a built-in light is a pretty nice feature. Now to charge this thing up, you simply plug it into the wall, or I think one of the coolest features is being able to use the solar panels. Now while a solar powered generator like this has some applications in the shop, you could certainly use certain small tools with it, and if you're in a low or no power situation, it could definitely get you out of a bind. What I'm thinking about are summer camping trips, just times when you're in a remote location, you don't necessarily have good access to electricity. Something like this is really gonna come in handy. 
really nice. And when we first moved to Missouri, if you follow me on social media, you might have seen within like the first two weeks of being here, we had a massive flood and I was not prepared for that. I watched my sump pump in the basement stop working in the middle of this flood and just thought to myself, wow, we are screwed if this water level comes up too high because I didn't have any kind of battery backup. So having a generator like this uh, in the house is going to be just a good insurance policy for us. Now, here's the thing you need to know. Jackery is having an amazing sale for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. In fact, on their Cyber Monday live stream, they're gonna be doing a huge giveaway, including a travel trailer. So we're gonna put the links in the description if you wanna check that out. But at the very least, go check out the deals that they have so you could save some money if you wanted to pick up one of these generators. So thanks for your support, Jackery, and let's get back to our build. To make the stand mobile, let's add some three inch casters. The screws won't hold real well long term in the end grain, so I add some supplemental pieces to the bottom, giving me plenty of room for the four screws. And we're mobile. The stand will have a shelf at the bottom and of course we need a surface on the top, so I'll cut a bunch of one by fours into slats. The two outer slats need to be notched for the legs, so I'll draw the lines, though I know the lines are kind of hard to see. Can't see the line, can you, Russ? Okay, I totally forced that one, but I'm not one to shy away from low hanging fruit. It's lap. I'll use a jigsaw to cut out the notches. And the Jackery easily handled powering this tool. Pretty awesome. The rest of the slats are just spaced by eye and then attached to the frame with a single screw for each slat. A single screw in the middle allows the boards to expand and contract freely. The top doesn't need anything special, so I'll add a little overhang on each side and then space them as evenly as I can. Now let's bring in the planer. All right, so there you go, a one day build. In fact, this is just a few hours to make something like this, and just about anybody can do it because you only need a few basic tools and some basic materials. But it is a nice, sturdy stand. We not only have the top support for the planer, or honestly, any other tool you would wanna put there, but you have the bottom shelf there for extra stock or again, another tool. And you can move it around wherever you need it to be in the shop. Now, I really like the idea of having the four lockable casters, especially on a planer. As you're feeding stock through there, you could potentially be pushing this thing around. So four locking casters, I think, is a really good option for something like this. So we will provide plans for this if you wanna make one for yourself. But I just wanna thank you guys for watching. Thank you, as always, for subscribing. And we'll see you next time. I hope you kids see what a silly waste of resources this was.